guys, welcome back to my channel where I share all things on influencer virtual assisting. My name is Kate and I'm so happy that you are here. Today, I wanted to do another video on frequently asked questions that I get. So this is everything ranging from how did you get your clients? How are you able to charge what you charge? And just different things like that. So let's get on into it. I have my questions here on my iPad, by the way. So I keep holding it up. So first question. This may be a dumb question, but if they have a management team, should I still message to see if they need an assistant? And the answer is this is to absolutely if they have a management team honestly like most management teams just manage their partnership so if you like click on their Instagram which is where I find most of their contact info their email if you click on it and it says like table rock management or da 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 management like they already have a management team they're probably just managing like their emails and managing just yeah all the different partnerships giftings and everything like that that comes in so you can still send an email to their management management team and I have had it several times where the management team says hey this is something she's really interested in can we set up a meeting so yes the message will still more than likely get through to them if it's like something that they're looking for question number two do you have any tips for doing a discovery call and onboarding clients so yes I do my first tip in going to an initial discovery call with a client is to already have them briefed on pricing and just the basics of the service so what I like to do is in my first initial email that I send. I also attach a portfolio of slides. I just made it in Canva. You know, you can make it look nice and cute. That just gives a rundown of me, my team, services we offer in our pricing structure. You don't want to go into a meeting and have it like be a waste of time. They, your pricing is not what they're looking for. Your services are not what they're looking for. So have that information all up front. And then from there, they can book a meeting. That way, in that meeting, they're pretty well set on, or they're very like 70%, 60% interested in hiring you if it's just an initial discovery call they don't know pricing or anything like that the percentage is probably going to go down to like 30 percent so get that in percentage up make the most of your time and give them all that information up front that's my biggest tip the discovery call should really just be set up to give a small spiel by yourself they kind of give a spiel you discuss what services they're looking for and then honestly from there i typically go into like what the onboarding process looks like and what it looks like to work with us that is what the basis of your onboarding call should be about the second part of that question is onboarding clients. So whenever it comes to onboarding clients, I always send over initial contract, just kind of going over different legal things and NDAs and just have the monetary value that they are contracted to give you just on that contract, just to take care of both sides of things. So that is one of the initial steps. The second is I see if they have any Canva templates pre-existing. If not, we go ahead and make them some. And third, I we do all the password sharing and everything. And fourth, I send over like a little quiz type deal just to really get a sense of their aesthetic, what their followers like to shop for, just to make sure that we can create cohesive content and do cohesive work for them. That way their followers don't notice a difference if it's them or it's us. Question number three, how did you get your clients? I have done a video on this several times and blog posts. I share a lot of it over on TikTok, so feel free to go check those out. I'll link them in the description below. But I have a process that I love to use. I like to find their influencer content creator that I'm looking interested in working with I find their email on Instagram I find that that's the best place to contact them is through email don't send it to their DMs because it's going to get lost because a lot of these creators have an influx of DMs coming from I know this from personal experience working with creators for several years now send it to their email because they're going to be in their inbox every single day I guarantee it most creators anyway because their inbox is where they're getting brand partnerships where they're talking with their management team as I mentioned previously and just where they are getting like the all their money comes from just emails that are coming in, if that makes any sense. So email is my favorite thing, my favorite method. But what is in that email and your subject line, it does make a difference. So I always lead with a very simple subject line, high exclamation mark, because this could be anything. So they're probably gonna open it because they don't know if it maybe it's a brand partnership or anything like that. A little clickbaity is what you're really looking for. Whenever they open the email, but don't let them be disappointed. You want a short and sweet email body that catches their attention. And I'll link the examples that I've used down below. And like I said previously, attach your portfolio. And 
like I'm not gonna lie I sent out a lot of emails in the beginning right now we have a good system of like referrals going but to really get that client base at the start I sent a lot of emails and by a lot of emails I'm talking like a hundred a day and don't quite like copy and paste each email you can use the same like message because it can only vary so much but try to personalize it a little bit definitely personalize it with their name and maybe tailor it to some of their personal interests whatever their personal business is if that makes sense and then yeah from there just send out a lot of emails shoot your shot with anybody and everybody that you think you but could potentially be interested in another little tidbit is try not to send to creators below 50k and probably above like a million to two million i we do have creators that we work with that are at that level but i do think it is kind of harder in the beginning to gain traction with those types of creators and uh, they will more than likely have an already set team if they are higher at those numbers because people typically start hiring outsourcing around like the 50 to 100 to 200k follower count i know that this is all <laughs> sounds so surface level and everything but it's business it's the way it is so those people are typically the ones that are looking to hire question number four are you hiring so we typically, I source a lot of our candidates. I have hired a few people that reach out to me personally. So you're always welcome to send over our portfolio and everything right now. We are in like the building stages. So I'm always open to adding on team members. But like I said, I do typically like source them myself, like looking on LinkedIn. And at this moment in time, I am looking for somebody who is already well versed in the creator space, who already knows about affiliate linking platform, knows about all the collages, graphics, and just who honestly is at the same level or better than I am. I know that <laughs> may sound a little weird, conceited, but I am looking for somebody who is very high performer and is very well versed. So if that's for you, feel free to email me. I'll put my email down below. Who are you working for as a virtual assistant where you are charging a higher amount an hour? I am a VA and make nowhere near $25 an hour. Okay, so a good place to start when you're just starting out I would recommend is like 20 to 25 dollars an hour that's a pretty reasonable amount especially here in the US if you're US based other countries I know that the dollar amount is a little bit more per dollar I think it's a conversion I may be wrong on that but I think experience is what is going to help you to be able to increase that dollar per hour amount I would say that every two years you could probably increase it by five dollars or every year I mean inflation rates are <laughs> going pretty crazy at the moment but you always want to make sure that you're constantly improving and getting better to make you more valuable. So that is something that I always like to go by when I was starting out. I think my first client <laughs> paid me like a hundred bucks a month. That was like when I was 17. I started very early in this industry. Uh, but now I have been able to work up to double, triple that. So start out is a good base. If you have no knowledge, I think 20, $25 here in the state is a good amount. And then from there, have more platforms that you learn and everything like that. And with each new client, you can experiment because you're going to learn kind of or like take what you're worth and or what you think you're worth what you want to be worth and go ahead and shoot your shot you know if you're looking at to increase your rate say you've been doing this for a while go ahead and just like get a number in your head of what you want to be worth what you think you're worth and go ahead and try it send out a few emails and see if it lands with anybody if it doesn't maybe you can look it over and be like okay am I asking too much is this too much for the service I will say I do think there is an amount that you can top out at in this industry just because <laughs> to a certain extent they are just graphics but at the end of the day you're saving them time and time is worth so much and it's so valuable hi kate you've inspired me and i followed all your steps and was able to land one client last month however i've been sending out lots and lots of emails after that and gotten little to no response what do i do so my first question for you would be how many is lots and lots is it like 20 50 100 500 let me know and we can go from there <laughs> But I know if you are sending out like over a hundred emails and not getting a response, I would really take a look at your email body, everything like that, and make sure just to refine it and elevate it. Maybe you don't have any pictures of yourself in your portfolio, so it may not be feeling very personable. Maybe your email body could use a little bit of work. Maybe your subject line could use a little bit of work. I would look over everything that you're offering and really elevate it because this is the first interaction they are going to have with you and your service and I always like to include a picture of me that may sound weird but it just makes it more personal in the portfolio not the email body don't put it in the email body but yes really just look at it from an outside point of view 
and you can even ask maybe your client that you got be like hey what caught your eye about my email you know just a little bit of feedback you can give them a small discount if they answer like a short quiz so you can really like hone in on what attracted them to you all right and our last question hey Kate can a person employ me to be answering DMs on TikTok Instagram so on yes if so how do I call that a service yes so that is what we call DM and Instagram management uh, this is something that we asked to do pretty frequently from creators respond to comments filter DMs kind of go through put what they need to answer what can be answered maybe as a general question and yeah just call it Instagram DM engagement management but yeah so that, that was a nice and easy one that is all that I have for you guys today please comment down below like any other questions you have or any other videos you would love to see I would love to make that for you thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video